Yes, you can go to DeSantisLies.com. Go to DeSantisLies.com. 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 Go to DeSantisLies.com. 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 Go to DeSantisLies.com. DeSantisLies.com. Go to DeSantisLies.com. You can go to DeSantisLies.com. Where again? What? What's the, what's the website? <laughs> I mean, I haven't Nobody. heard that a website repeated that much since DickMorris.com used to come on Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, what did you guys make of that? Okay. Her new line, her new attempt to disparage. Uh, I think what she's trying to do is avoid being the one to litigate all of this in public herself all the time and, and point people to a direction where they think they've got some material that points out the deficiencies of Ron DeSantis without her having to get in the, the dog fight. But it, it, that happened anyway. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, right. look, it's a tactic. It's a tactic that we've used from an operative standpoint a lot is you, you have these microsites that mm -hmm. point out various aspects of your opponent's record and you can get people to land on the page. Uh, then you can educate some people on some stuff. Well, yeah, because you don't want to spend all of your time in the debate reacting to the thing that, that the other person said and having to correct the record because then you're not getting your message out. So these microsites and stuff sort of become um, you know, your way of parrying away what they said and then getting to the point you want to make. The problem is like it also becomes a crutch in and of itself where part of winning a debate is successfully parrying it away and then making the point all in the same mm. 30 seconds, 90 seconds. And I think DeSantis did a better job. And I think they both had had good moments in the debate. But I think DeSantis is better at at taking what what Nikki is saying, making a point and then pivoting to when I was governor, I actually did the thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And she yeah. she kind of it became a crutch where she was just sort of relying on this microsite to sort of move on, which I don't think but is a good tactic. There was something annoying call. about it, too. It was like, I heard it already. <laughs> yeah. It's starting to feel like you're a telemarketer. You know, I got, yeah. I, I've had enough. I, I What am I supposed to donate to you when I get there? For sure, you're going to hit me up for money. There's be a reason you keep saying it dozens of times. Credit to Breitbart for, for putting together that soundbite. Meanwhile, um, I think DeSantis overall, yes, I agree he did well. I'd have to give him the advantage as between the two of them and, and how it went over, how it made me feel. But he had some doozies in there too, like this one in SOT 4. You know, I debated the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. Um, you know, I thought he lied a lot. Uh, man, Nikki Haley may, gives him a run for his money and she may even be more liberal than Gavin Newsom is. No. <laughs> no. Should have stuck with just lies <laughs> no. as much. <laughs> I don't, she's not Again, more liberal than Gavin Newsom. Is anyone more liberal than Gavin Newsom? That's the thing. I bet Trump could convince people. Like when he's <laughs> when he's on a roll and you're uh, like lulled to it, you know, I bet he could he could drop that and it'd be a lot smoother. DeSantis, DeSantis, DeSantis just that. doesn't do rehearsed lines well. It's that, not his no. style. Yeah. I wish it his team didn't totally. try to give him to him. It doesn't work. I completely no. agree. You're but so it, right, you're Duncan. Yep. <laughs> he's he is exactly right. And when when you're doing these debates, you have to ask you you're basically making a choice in that are you talking to the audience of people who are sitting there and watching CNN for a solid hour to decide who it is they like better or are you talking to an audience of people who are going to be looking at clips of the debate, watching things that are that are said afterwards? And you have you have to figure out how to address both of those audiences because they're equally as important. I would say on the Nikki Haley thing, if if there's one thing anybody remembered out of that debate, it's that she and her campaign are saying that DeSantis lies. And maybe somebody goes to the website. They certainly weren't going to go to the website if she hadn't mentioned it 16,000 times. And maybe, <laughs> and maybe maybe it makes her look awkward, but maybe that's a risk she's willing to run to get people to go to the website. She also, and look, we're talking about it. Thing. If this presidential thing doesn't work out for her, she could replace Billy Mays as mm -hmm. a uh, info <laughs> telemarketing. Uh, no, I, crazy I think Eddie. Vivek has that market cornered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, Vivek is still in the race. Um, just in yeah. case people yeah, were wondering, right. he's still technically out there. Uh, she's obviously focused on New Hampshire, uh, supremely focused on New Hampshire. We talked about the Chris Christie effect. I just want to give the audience the latest polling. In New Hampshire, the thing that has Team Haley and her her supporters excited uh, is there's a CNN poll that shows uh, 
Trump only seven points up over Nikki in New Hampshire. Trump at 39, Nikki at 32. She has a 12 point jump since the last CNN poll, which was in November. And Christie in that poll had 12%. So 32 plus 12 is 44. And there's Trump at 39, leading people to think, okay, if Christie drops out, she's actually got a chance of not just coming in first in the undercard contest in New Hampshire, she could beat Trump, which could potentially stop his momentum. This is the hope of those who don't want Trump. But you look around and there's a New Hampshire Republican poll out of um, WD, WHDH TV in Emerson. It gets an A minus uh, rating. Uh, and uh, Trump is up 16. There's one from USA Today, Suffolk. It also has an A minus rating, that poll. So it's a good one. Trump is up 20. And I've heard a lot of people say you cannot trust New Hampshire polling. I don't know why you cannot trust it, but I've heard a lot of people say that, like be very careful about putting too much stock into these numbers out of New Hampshire. Look, if she doesn't, let's talk Turkey. If DeSantis, because DeSantis right now might lose Iowa to Nikki Haley too. He's definitely going to lose it to Trump, I think. It looks that way. And if he comes in third in Iowa, do you agree he's out? He's going to announce he's done after Iowa. And if she, yeah, and then, all right, then we'll do her after. Yeah, well, look, I think it gets exceedingly very difficult. I mean, he's made it plain since the very beginning that they intend to play in Iowa as a primary strength of that campaign. And they've put a ton of resources into Iowa. If he's not in second in Iowa, I think it gets very, very difficult because, it, look, you immediately pivot and go to New Hampshire and he's not even really playing there, right? No. So that's a long period of time where you have underperformed expectations. It gets very difficult to fundraise. Your your ability to stay on top of the news cycle wanes you know, people naturally want to go with a momentum candidate. So I do think it would be very difficult for DeSantis. And I think that, look, the most significant thing that can happen in this race is if Nikki Haley figures out how to get into second place in Iowa. Yep. Because if that mm -hmm. happens, coupled with the Chris Christie departure in New Hampshire, and she's got a very real shot, it's not just those polls that you listed, Megan, there, there's a half dozen more that you know may not show her within the margin of error but has a huge momentum swing where she was down in the low you know 10 11 12 now up to the 30s in almost every other poll regardless of where and, Trump and is right standing. when you want it Holmes right right when you she's gotten the momentum right when you want it exactly when you want it and so look if she gets second there and then all of a sudden shocks the world and beats that sort of fait accompli that Trump has had since the beginning of this campaign, that he's eventually going to be the nominee, you're then going into her home state in a mano a mano. Mm -hmm. Like if they were looking for one way to make this actual race interesting, it would be that exact set of circumstances. Yep. And I, I think also a lot of this discussion should be around the problems that the DeSantis campaign has had since launch, where, I mean, they've had numerous people who have left the super PAC and then the super PAC leaked details of what their plan was. And then the candidate has to come out and say, no, that's not our plan. Like it's been very chaotic to where they've boxed themselves into a position where if they don't come in second place in Iowa, it's essentially a wrap because then they go into New Hampshire and they're expecting to get third at best. Then they're going to South Carolina, hoping to get third at best. Like what is the case for staying in at that point? So they've cornered themselves into a very terrible situation. Yeah. I think there's some evidence though. And I mean, an Iowa, a caucus, a caucus system just overall, tends to reward the most or, organized, most conservative no candidate. We, I mean, we've seen this numerous times. So it's always why like mm. the Ron Paul people did so well in, yeah. in contests like this. And I think that's an advantage to DeSantis. Um, I would also encourage people to read uh, the Associated Press's uh, recent story. Steve Peoples had a great article from on the ground in Iowa, and they pointed out a couple of things that are think I think are interesting. 63% of likely first-time Republican caucus goers are saying Trump is their first choice. And there's people in here that they talked to who said, I'm 100% behind Trump, but I'm only pretty sure I'm going to end up caucusing for him. 2024 is here. Sorting through your expense tracking, estimated payments, and all those deductions is overwhelming. It might lead to a failure to file or a failure to pay penalties that pile up on your tax debt. But you can check out Tax Network USA. The attorneys at Tax Network USA have been lifesavers for many. Their team has successfully saved clients over $1 billion in tax debts. Whether you're in the hole for ten grand or staring at a $10 million debt, they're ready to help you. Even if you haven't filed in one to five years or a whole decade, the expert attorneys and tax pros at Tax Network USA are equipped to secure the best settlement for you. 
and to help you resolve all tax cases, no matter how they started. Go to taxnetworkusa.com slash Megan, or just call 1-800-245-6000. But contact them now as these tax debt relief programs are expected to change. taxnetworkusa.com slash Megan, or call 1-800-245-6000 and tell them Megan Kelly sent you there. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.